welcome to Brothers of the Word. Because brother, you need the Word. And today is actually, it is part five of the eight part series entitled, How to Love You. And beginning the series was the message, the power of love. The second message in the series, how to know when you don't love you. The third message, the difference between self-esteem and boastful pride. The fourth message, what to do when others don't love you. And today's message is the first step to loving you. And this series, the whole foundation and the whole premise stems from when Jesus says, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And if you don't love you, you cannot love your neighbor. And it is a difficult proposition oftentimes to get those who don't love themselves to learn to love themselves properly and without going overboard in self-love, but having the love enough so that you can love others as you love you. And the first and most important step in loving you is that you must feel worthy to be loved. You must feel worthy to be loved. First thing you need to know is that God loves you. God loves you. As Jesus was talking to the disciples, and oftentimes Jesus had to talk to the disciples because they fell off the wagon and they felt down and, and they didn't do right. So Jesus would often have to pep up those who were with them. And if you're ever in leadership, oftentimes those who are with you will fall down and feel despondent and lose sight of the vision. And when pressure gets on them, they'll begin to bend and bow and crack. And, and Jesus had to often pump up the disciples. And in, and in Matthew 10, 29, he says, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are more value than many sparrows. Jesus had to tell people, look, God knows the very numbers of the hairs on your head. And, and if he doesn't let a sparrow, and a sparrow is one of the smallest of the birds. He said if he doesn't let a sparrow fall to the ground without his permission, then what do you think about you? Aren't you worth more than many birds? So when you understand how God views us and how important we are to God, so important that every single hair on your head has a number. Now, some of you have more hair on your head than others. The average person has about 100,000 hairs on their head. Every one of them is numbered. When you comb your hair in the morning and you see it, you can say, that's number hair, 89,724. God knows that. He says, the very hairs on your head are numbered, yet sometimes we will not feel worthy just because we have less hair than someone else. Do you know what happens if you have a bald spot? Do you know some people absolutely start feeling terrible just because their hair is receding? God knows that. God says, my child, that's number half, 75,086 through 99,108 that just left. God knows the very numbers of the hairs on your head. Then in Matthew 6, 28, he says, and why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field how they grow, they toil not, 
neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith, some think that they're not worthy because of their clothes. And God says, look, I, I've clothed the lilies of the field and they are far more fabulous than Solomon. And Solomon was loaded. He had a thousand cars, a thousand chariots. That's equivalent to having 1,000 cars. Solomon was rich beyond measure. And you know any man who had a thousand cars, you know that his threads were not raggedy. You know that not only did he have the best of the designer clothes, he had the ability to have the designers come to him, tailor make his stuff so that he didn't even have to go to the rack to get his clothes. Gucci came to him. But yet God says the lilies of the field are clothed better than Solomon. And, and he cares more about you than the lilies of the field. So when you understand God loves you, you have to feel worthy to be loved. Don't worry about your clothes or your material status. This is a brother point that actually comes from Einstein. It's a quote that hung in his office. And it says, not everything that counts can be counted. And not everything that can be counted counts. Not everything that counts can be counted. And not everything that can be counted counts. So when you understand and you understand in truth the real important things of life, you really can't count. Psalms 8.3 begins... When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visiteth him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And some of you may say, well, that's talking, that's David talking. God made David perhaps just a little lower than the angels. No, he was talking to you. He says he's put all of the beasts of the field and the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea under your dominion. Let, 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 me, let me break it down and let me ask a question. How many of you all have eaten some chicken this year? Raise your hand. That's pretty much most of the people in the audience except for those who are vegetarian. You've all had some chicken. That's fowl of the air. That's under your dimension. And while you were sitting there gnawing on that bone from those wings and that fried chicken or broil or grill or however you had it sauteed, that chicken was under your dimension. See, if you had been under its dominion, it would have been eating you. <laughs> but you have dominion over the chicken. How many of you all have had some fish this year? I don't care what kind it was, whether it was red snapper or catfish. Catfish is not a clean fish biblically, but it tastes good. <laughs> so no matter what kind of fish you have eaten, that fish was under your dimension of dominion. You control that fish. Now see, if you were in the ocean, stuck out there and some sharks were circling you, you're under the dominion of the sharks. But God has placed dominion in your hands 
over the fowl in the air, over the fish of the sea. How many of you all have had a hamburger this year? Raise your hands. That's most of the, that's beast of the field. That's beef. God has placed all of this stuff under your dominion. So when you understand what God has said about man, you have to know that you are worthy to be loved. But still, some of us don't feel worthy. I, I want you to listen to and, and watch a song. This song is by a man named Dan Stewart, and it's called Three Wooden Crosses. Now, it's not a Christian song. It's actually a country song. But when I first heard the song, it, it, it hit me and it illustrates the message today. It's three minutes, 17 seconds. But I want you to listen to the words of this song. Go ahead and play Three Wooden Crosses by Dan Stewart as we listen to it. And I want you to understand that no matter what you've gone through, God loves you and can redeem you from no matter what. A farmer and a teacher, a hooker and a preacher, riding on a midnight bus bound for Mexico. One was heading for vacation, one for higher education. And the two of them were searching for lost souls That driver never ever saw the stop sign Eighteen wheelers can't stop on a dime There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway Why there's not four of them Heaven only knows I guess it's not what you take When you leave this world behind you It's what you leave behind you when you go That farmer left a harvest A home in 80 acres A faith and love for growing things In his young son's heart And that teacher left her wisdom in the minds of lots of children Did her best to give them all a better start And that preacher whispered Can't you see the promised land As he laid that bloodstained Bible In that hooker's hands There are three wooden crosses On the right side of the highway why there's not four of them, heaven only knows I guess it's not what you take when you leave this world behind you It's what you leave behind you when you go That's the story that our preacher told last Sunday As he held that bloodstained Bible up for all of us to see Said, bless the farmer and the teacher and the preacher Who gave this Bible to my mama Who read it to me There are three wooden crosses On the right side of the highway Why there's not four of them Now I guess we know what you take when you leave this world behind you What you leave behind you when you go There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway Brothers of the Word, when the voice of God is heard, Brothers of the Word, there's a word from God for everyone Brothers of the Word, because brother, you need the word Brothers of the world, brothers of the world, where the voice of God. 